Space, I think, is often conceived as this incredibly harsh and cold place where nothing can really exist. There's just a big, dark vacuum between stars. But it turns out that that is not what space is like at all. There are tons of molecules and little dust grains that's floating around between stars, and we really live in a very chemical universe. So when astronomers turn their telescopes towards places where stars and planets are currently assembling, we see these incredibly complex organic molecules uh, that we would otherwise have associated with life here on Earth. And that means we're in this weird territory where everything is pointing towards that there should be billions of planets that are quite similar to us. I came of age scientifically right as planets around other stars were starting to be discovered. It would be so exciting to discover extraterrestrial life. It would teach us something very fundamental uh, about how life originates and therefore about our own history. But it will also teach us something about our place in the universe. There are two ways you can try to figure out if these potentially habitable planets are actually habitable. One is to try to look directly at the habitable planets that we are, we are finding. This is much more difficult, and it's not possible with the telescopes we have right now. The other way is to do very detailed studies of the material that goes into forming planets. Planets form from dust and gas in disks around young stars. When a star is born, it is born with a disk of gas and dust around it. And then this dust starts sticking together into first into pebbles, then into boulders, and then into planets. We actually don't know exactly what it is that makes the Earth so special. But there are a few things that most people agree upon is needed for anything like Earth-like life. One is that you have access to liquid water. Liquid water, uh, we think, is absolutely necessary for life. To have liquid water, you need to be at the right temperature for that water to be liquid. So astronomers, when they look for planets that are potentially habitable, they're really looking for planets that are sitting in this in-between temperate zone, where the temperature is just right for having liquid water. The other is that you need some of the building blocks of cells of our bodies to be in that water, and those are different kinds of organics. The most promising chemical foundations of origins of life here on Earth that we have right now involves a very particular class of organic molecules called nitriles. If you start with hydrogen cyanide and kind of nitrile, and you mix that together with small sulfur-bearing molecules in water, you end up forming all the building blocks of life as it exists today. But this water and these organics had to come from somewhere. We have good evidence that the water here on Earth came from space. Probably something similar is true for organics, that the organic molecules that were the building blocks of life here on Earth also originated in some form in space. It's going to take another decade before we can directly observe one of these planets and see, do they have these nitriles there, these key molecules for origins of life? But what we can do already now is look for nitriles in planet-forming disks to start to figure out how often the planets form in an environment or from ingredients that include these potentially prebiotic molecules, especially these nitriles. We have a gap in our understanding between the formation of these rather complex building blocks of life and actually having a living thing. But 
I think there are several pieces of evidence pointing towards that gap closing. And it has been closing in the past decades, which makes me very hopeful that we will one way cross it completely and really find that the origins of life was a natural process. If it turns out, as I think it will be, that this was a natural process, then there is something really exciting going on with how our universe is constituted and how the loss of chemistry must in some way be directed towards the loss of biology. That suggests that the whole universe has a story built into it, where we go from physics to the Big Bang, to the first molecules, uh, to the first life, where one step depends on the previous ones, but also brings to it something completely new.